Ayun, so magandang araw sa inyong lahat. So um i-discuss natin yung first topic ng ating subject na physics 2. So yung first part ng ating syllabus ay yung thermodynamics. Okay? So dito sa thermodynamics, nahati siya sa four major topics, okay? Yung temperature and heat, thermal properties of matter, the first law of thermodynamics, and the second law of thermodynamics. So sa syllabus, ang nakalagay lang is the first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics. Pero para maintindihan nyo yung dalawang law na yun, kailangan nating maintindihan muna yung temperature and heat and thermal properties of matter. Okay? So let's proceed doon sa um, topic number one natin. So yung topic number one, nahati din siya sa pito. Okay? Itong major topic sa temperature and heat. Okay? So ito yung topic. Temperature and thermal equilibrium, thermometers and temperature scale, gas thermometers and Kelvin, cycle, uh, Kelvin scale, uh, thermal expansion, quantity of heat, calorimetry and phase changes, and yung last yung mechanics of heat transfer. Okay? So, let's start. So, magsisimula tayo dito sa tinatawag na temperature and thermal equilibrium. Okay? So, the concept kasi ng temperatures is rooted in qualitative ideas of hot or cold. Okay? So, yung pinakang idea kasi ng temperature talaga is nagsimula kung saan uh, tinitingnan natin kung yung isang bagay is um, mainit pa siya or malami. Okay? A body that feels hot usually has a higher temperature than a similar body that feel so good. So, um, kung natatandaan nyo kapag gusto nyo malaman kung yung um, isang tao is may lagnat pero wala kang thermometer na ginagamit, nilalapat natin yung palad natin or yung likod ng palad natin sa kanya para ma-feel natin yung init ng katawan. Kung magka, hindi ba kayo magkaparehas ng init ng katawan. Okay? So, kasi, kasi daw, yung merong higher temperature daw is mararamdaman ng merong um, malamig na katawan. Okay? That's pretty um, valued and sense can be deceived. But many properties of matter that we can measure depend on the temperature. The length of the metal rod is the pressure in a boiler, uh, the ability of a wire to conduct an electric current and the color of a hot glowing object. So, bukod dun sa ginagamit nating palat, may iba't iba pa tayong um, makikita na kung paano may sure. So, yung iba, yung mga metal rod, kapag naiinit, sumahaba. Yung mga stem pressure na sa boiler, no? Tapos yung mga, kung pamilyar kayo sa thermocouple, yung kapag um, nagkakaroon siya ng heat is nagkakandak siya ng electricity then ang pinaka madaling sa ating masabing mainit kapag nakikita nating nagbabaga yung isang bagay okay so tem temperature and thermal equilibrium so, dito tayo ngayon. So, to use temperature as a measure of hotness and coldness, we need to construct a temperature scale. Okay? So, para magawa ito, pwede tayong um, gumamit ng iba't ibang bagay para malaman natin kung malamig ba siya or mainit. So, yung first figure natin, kung mapapansin nyo, okay. Yeah. 
So, kung makikita natin yung first figure, is ito yung parang thermometer. Okay? So, yung colored liquid na nandito usually is ethanol or mercury na expand siya. And pag nag-expand yan, aakyat yan doon sa tube natin. Okay? So, magbabago ngayon yung length or yung end natin. Okay? Another um, isang paraan para malaman natin yung init or yummy is yung pressure ng isang gas na nasa loob ng isang container. Okay? So, kapag uminit kasi yung gas na yun, tataas yung pressure. Kabalik para naman pag lumamay. Okay? And ang isa pang pinakang um, makikita natin is yung thermocouples. So, yung thermocouples kasi uh, kapag nainitan siya, nagkakaroon siya ng reaction at nagkakandak siya ng electricity. Meron din mga material ng mga semiconductor na kapag umiinit is nagiging um, nagiging ano sila? Conductive. Pero pag malamig, um, ano sila? Insulated. Okay? So, to measure a body, no? To measure a body, you place the thermometer in contact with the body. Okay? So, kapag um, nakikita nyo to kapag meron tayong kinukuha na ng temperature like mga bata or yung mga may sakit, tinitingnan natin kung meron silang lagnat. Okay? So, habang tinitingnan natin sila kung merong lagnat, ipiniplace natin yung thermometer doon sa katawan ng bata. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung mga lumang thermometer and yung mga digital na ganito, hindi yung binabarela, is kailangan iniiwan ng ilang minutes or ilang seconds doon sa katawan ng kinukuha na natin ng temperature. So, for example, meron akong mainit na kape, no? Tapos, nilagyan ko siya ng temperature rod. So, yung mainit na kape, paiinitin niya yung temperature rod. And yung temperature rod naman is papalamigin niya yung mainit na kape. Okay? So, after um, ilang minutes, is magpapantay yung init ng kape and ng temperature rod. Ganon din ang nangyayari dito sa batang ito, saka sa temperate, uh, thermometer. So, pag tumunog na yung thermometer, ibig sabihin magkapantay na yung temperature ng bata and nung thermometer. Yun ang tinatawag na temperate, uh, thermal equilibrium. Okay? So, so, meron din tayong tinatawag na ideal insulator. Pero bago yan, kilalanin na muna natin kung ano yung ibig sabihin ng insulator. Okay? If two systems are separate by insulating material or insulator, sa wood, plastic, foam, or fiberglass, the influence each other more slowly. Okay? So, pag meron daw, meron daw na mamagitan sa kanila, sa dalawang bodies. No? Pag may namamagitan sa dalawang bodies na insulator, mabagal yung pag-interact nila sa isa't isa or mabagal yung pagpasa ng heat or cold doon sa mga bodies na yon So, meron tayong tinatawag na ideal insulator. So, ano mga ba itong ideal insulator na to? So, yung ideal insulator, ang ibig sabihin niya is yung mga insulator na yung mga insulator na kapag inilagay mo siya doon sa body, hindi sila mag-i-interact kahit kailan. So, kaya nga siya ideal. So, ang example ng mga insulator natin, hindi siya uh, hindi ideal insulator, insulator lang, is yung paborito nating ice drop. So, nakalagay siya sa styrofoam. Styrofoam. So, yung styrofoam, yung nagsisilbing insulator niya para yung init sa labas, is hindi makapasok sa loob at hindi matunaw yung paborito nating ice drop. Okay? So, yun yung uh, insulator. Okay. So, pasok tayo ngayon sa tinatawag na zero law of thermodynamics. 
So, we can discover an important property of thermal equilibrium by considering three systems. So, kung makikita nyo dito sa presentation natin, meron tatlong system, which is system A, B, and C. Uh, that initial are not thermal equilibrium sa so simula daw, hindi daw sila, hindi daw sila uh, magkakapantay ng temperature. Okay? We surround them with an ideal insulating box so that they can cannot interact with anything except each other. So, yung system na yun, inilagay sa isang um, insulation, yung box na kulay gray, para hindi daw makipag-interact dun sa labas. So, ang mag interact lang is yung nasa loob. So, we separate system A and system B with an ideal insulating wall. Na kung mapapansin nyo is yung kulay green dito. Okay? Insulate. But we let system C interact with both system A and B. Pero si system C daw is malayang nakakapag-interact sa A and B ng sabay. So dito. Okay? This interaction is shown in this figure. Uh, the yellow slab ito representing a thermal conductor. So, kung familiar kayo sa mga thermal conductor, mga metal, and mga thermal fixed tube, parang ganito siya. Okay. A material that permits thermal interaction too. We will wait until thermal equilibrium is attained. Okay. So, hayaan natin na magkaroon ng thermal equilibrium. Si A sa C at si B sa C. Okay. So, ang tanong, No? Yung A ba at B is magkakaroon ng thermal equilibrium sa C. So, ang sagot doon, So, ang sagot doon is, oo, oh, oh, magkakaroon siya ng thermal equilibrium sa C. Pero ang tanong, sa pangtanong ay yung A ba is, and yung B is magkaparehas yung temperature. So, kakandak ulit tayo ng experiment na nanandito. Okay? So, imbis, imbis na yung A at B yung nilagyan ng insulator, nilagyan yung, ng insulator yung C. Okay? So, dito sa experiment na na to, ang makikita is walang pagbabago doon sa temperature ng A at B. Okay? So, pwede nating makonclude na if C is initially in thermal equilibrium with both A and B, then A and B are also in thermal equilibrium with each other. This result is called the Serot Law of Thermodynamics. So, ayan siya. So, suppose, now, uh, now, suppose C is a thermometer. So, kunwari daw, papalitan natin itong C na to ng thermometer. Such as a liquid in a tube system, yung katulad kanina, no, yung merong ethanol or mercury sa to. In thermal equilibrium, when the thermometer reading reach a stable value, the thermometer measure the temperature of both A and B. So, kapag na-stable na daw yung temperature, nagkaroon na ng thermal equilibrium, yung thermometer na yung C, ang maririd niya daw na temperature is yung A and B. Okay? So, magkaparehas yung temperature ng A and B. So, dito sa experiment na to is nagpapakita na yung equilibrium daw ay hindi naapektuhan ng pagtanggal or paglagay ng insulator sa ating system. So, the reading ng temper, uh, thermometer, system C, 
is hindi nagbabago na nakakontak sa A and P. So, pwede natin i-conclude na two systems are thermal equilibrium if and only if they have the same temperature. Okay? So, ito yung um, nangyayari doon sa thermometer kaya nagiging pakipakinabot siya. So, a thermometer actually measure its own temperature but a tempe, uh, thermometer is in thermal equilibrium with another body. So, yung sample ko kanina yung bata. Okay? So, ang ibig sabihin pala, ang naririt ng isang thermometer ay hindi yung body na dinikitan niya, kundi yung sarili niyang temperature. Pero dahil meron thermal equilibrium, parehas ngayon yung temperature ng body and yung temperature ng thermometer. So, same lang yung maririd niya na um, same lang yung maririd niya na temperature. So, when the temperature of two systems are different, they cannot be in thermal equilibrium. Okay? So, yun yung um, iniiwasan natin sa pagririd ng tempor, um, thermometer. So, kaya hinihintay natin na magka-thermal equilibrium bago natin matanggal. Okay? So, yun. So ngayon, papasok tayo sa second topic sa ano, sa temperature and heat, yung tinatawag na thermometers and temperature scale. Okay. So make a liquid in tube device shown in the figure. Uh, into use for the thermometer, we need to mark a scale on the tube wall with numbers on it. So para daw mapakinabangan natin yung tube na to, is kailangan meron tayong Uh, meron tayong um, scale na ginagamit. Katulad ng mga meter stick natin, kailangan merong mga numbers. So, hindi pwedeng sabihin natin na ano yung temperature, kalahati lang nga yan ng tube. Hindi pwedeng yan. So, kailangan gumawa tayo ng mark. So, these numbers are arbitrary and historically may different scheme have been used. Suppose we label a thermometer liquid level at freezing temperature of pure water. So, zero yon. So, ang ginawa ng mga scientists or physicists nung unang panahon, kumuha sila ng tubig, tapos, prinis nila ito, hinintay nila itong ma-freeze. Tapos, nung ma-freeze na, inilagay nila yung thermometer. So, yung thermometer na yun, min, uh, yung, yung thermometer na yon tiningnan nila kung asaan yung level ng red liquid. Okay? Itong red liquid na yun. So, nakita nila na nandito siya, minark nila yon as zero. Okay? So, yun yung first, yun yung first na ano nila. Um, first step. Okay? So, pakatapos nung makuha nila yung zero, inuha nila yung tubig na yon at ininitan. Inilagay sa something na Um, kaldero or um, katulad nyon, ininit nila. Hinintay naman nila itong kumulo. So, nung kumulo na yung tubig, inilagay nila ulit yung temperature. So, nung mahit, yung, nung mahit na nung, ano, nung red liquid, kung saan yung level niya, minark naman nila ito na 100. So, from zero to 100. So, ngayong panahon, ito yun yung tinatawag natin uh, Celsius Temperature Scale. Ito yung tinatawag natin degree Celsius. So, noong unang panahon, tinatawag na centigrade. Okay? So, ngayon, ang, ang tinatawag, tinatawag na natin siyang degree Celsius. Okay? So, doon nag-originate yung uh, Celsius Temperature Scale. So, meron pang isang sikat na um, scale na ginagamit ngayong panahon. So, yun, ito naman yung tinatawag na Fahrenheit. Okay? So, paano ba nag-originate yung Fahrenheit?
So, yung Fahrenheit naman is nag-originate sa tinatawag na bimetallic strip na thermometer. Yung bimetallic, bimetallic strip na yon is uh, para siyang spring na nakaspiral. Okay? So, kapag yung temperature naman ng strip is mag-increase, yung metal na ginamit sa spiral is nag-expand. Okay? More than the other end strip bends. So, meron, pa, meron para siyang dalawang metal. No? Siguro, mas maganda is elaborate ko dito. So, meron siyang dalawang metal, no? So, kunwari ganito. Okay? So, yung isa ko, lay blue. Meron siyang dalawang metal. Magkadikit yan, ha? Hindi ko lang ma... Ano, magkadikit po yan. 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 So, magkadikit yan. So, magkaparehas yung... Ano nila? Yung haba nung red and nung blue. So, yung isa doon is nagre-react sa temperature. So, yung isa kasi, kapag nabibigyan ng mainit, so, mahaba siya. Okay. One metal extend more than the other strip. Okay. This strip is usually formed with a spiral with the outer end, anchored to the thermometer case. And the inner end attached to the pointer. The pointer rotates response to temperature changes. So, meron sila nilagay na ano dito, na needle. Okay? Para pag nakita nila na humaba yung isa, mahatak na yun yung needle papunta dito. Okay? Ito pala yung isang uri pa ng thermometer. Okay. So, yung Fahrenheit temperature scale naman is ginagamit sa United States. Okay? The freezing temperature of water dito is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or 2 third degree. 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? And the boiling point naman ng water is 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So, both at standard atmospheric pressure. Okay? There are 100, 180 degrees between freezing and boiling compared to 100 to the Celsius degree. Celsius scale. Okay? So, para makonvert yung degrees Fahrenheit to Celsius, gumawa sila ng formula. So, kunwari, i-convert mo siya sa Fahrenheit. Ang formula is 9 over 5 multiply the temperature na nakat uh, degree Celsius tapos plus 42. Okay. So, pag i-convert naman natin yung naka Fahrenheit to degree Celsius, uh, imamainusan muna natin siya ng 32 tapos i-multiply natin siya ng 5 over 9. So, tandaan nyo na lang yung formula. Okay. So, punta tayo ngayon dito sa third topic. Um, gas thermometers and Kelvin cycles. Uh, Kelvin scales. So, when we calibrate two thermometers such as a liquid in tube system and a resistance thermometer, so that they agree at 0 and 100 degrees Celsius, they may not agree exactly at in, uh, intermediate temperature. So, any temperature scale defined in the way always depends somewhat on the specific properties of material use. So, ideally, we would like to define a temperature scale that doesn't depend on the properties of a, a particular material. Okay? To establish a truly mat uh, material-dependent scale, we first need to develop some properties of thermodynamics. Uh, we'll return this point of uh, Babalik tayo dito pag nasa chapter 20 na tayo. Okay? Pero ngayon, i-discuss muna natin yung gas thermometer. 
So the principle of a gas thermometer is is that the pressure of the gas constant volume increase with temperature. Okay? So kung mapapansin niyo, kapag ang isang gas ay ating iniinit, is nagtataas yung pressure niya. Okay? So ito yung ginagamit na ito yung ginagamit na um, idea na mga pressure cooker natin kung bakit mas mabilis na nakakaluto kasi pag tumataas yung temperature tumataas din yung pressure so ang mangyayari is mas madaling naluluto yung mga pagkain okay a quantity of gas is placed in a constant volume container so, makikita nyo siya dito sa figure na to okay so Yung bilog na yan, yung makikita nyo, yan yung container natin. So, to calibrate a constant volume gas thermometer, we measure the pressure of two temperatures. So, dahi, uh, kaya nyo nilagay dito sa yellow para makuha nyo yung 0 degrees, then nilalagay nyo naman ngayon sa 100 degrees para makuha nyo yung boiling. Point these points on the graph and draw a line between them, then we read from the graph the temperature corresponding to any other pressure. Okay? So, kung, mag, kung ilalagay daw natin siya dito sa graph na to, kunwari, dito yung 0, dito yung 100, at gumawa tayo ng graph, makakakuha tayo ng plot of pressure as function of temperature of gas thermometers con containing different types of quantity of gas. Okay? So, ito na yung naging um, result ng three, sa, three experiments nila. So, iba-ibang gas daw yung ginamit dito. Okay? By ex extrapolating the graph, we see that there is a hypothetical temperature and negative 273.15. No? At which absolute pressure of a gas would become zero. So, kapag nakita daw nila yung tatlong magkakaibang gas na yun, is yung absolute zero, nag-zero daw yung pressure, no? Doon sa negative 273.15. Negative yan, ha? Degrees Celsius. So, ibig sabihin, yung tatlong gas na pala yun, kahit magkakaiba yung properties nila, is kapag nilagay mo sila sa 273, negative 273.15 degrees Celsius, is mag, magiging zero yung um, pressure niya. Okay? We might expect that the temperature would be different for different gases. But it turns out the same for many different gases. Okay? We can't actually, we can't actually uh, observe the zero pressure condition. Ga uh, gases liquefy and solidify at very low temperature. And the proportionality of pressure temperature is no wrong allowance. Okay. We, wish, we use the extrapolated zero pressure temperature as the basis of temperature scale with its zero at this temperature. So, ito yung tinatawag natin na Kelvin Temperature Scale na um, nanggaling sa isang British physicist na si Lord Kelvin na nabuhay ng 1824 hanggang 1907. So, the units are the same size as those in Celsius degree. But zero is shift to zero Kelvin na nasa negative 273.15. Okay? So, ang pagkakaiba niya doon sa Celsius degree no? So, pagkakaiba niya doon sa Celsius degree, um, yung Celsius degree is nagsisimula sa zero. Okay? Pag kinonvert mo yung Kelvin, yung zero ng Kelvin is nasa two, uh, negative 273.50. Okay? So, para makonvert natin, from Celsius degree, okay, De from degree Celsius para maging Kelvin, sa um, 
eh, mag a lang tayo ng 273.25. Ganun lang kasi. And beware na ang tawag sa kanya is Kelvin. Okay? So, hindi siya nilalagyan ng degree. So, marami kasi ang nagsasabi na, kunwari, uh, 293 degrees Kelvin. So, mali yun. Dapat ang tama is 293 Kelvin. So, yun lang. Okay? So, meron tayong example dito, no? So, this is example number one, body temperature. So, you place a small piece of ice in your mouth. So, naglagay ka daw ng yelo sa iyong bibig. Eventually, the water all converts from ice at temperature 32 degrees Fahrenheit to body temperature. So, yung second temperature natin is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. So, express the temperature in both Celsius degree and Kelvin and find the um, change in temperature or delta T. So, in case dito, ang gagamitin natin is T to minus T1. So, paano natin siya gagawin? So, madali lang siya. Ang totoo, madali lang siya. Okay? So, ang gagawin natin, meron tayong T1, No? Yung T1 natin is 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Yung T2 naman natin is yung T2 naman natin is 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay? So, ang unang gagawin natin dito is i-convert natin siya sa Fahrenheit and Kelvin. So, gagamitin natin yung formula kanina. So, Ito is, uh, ikakonvert natin siya sa Celsius and Kelvin. Okay. So, temperature 1 na naka-degree Celsius is equal. So, gamitin natin yung formula kanina, no? So, hanapin natin yung formula kanina. Okay. So, yung formula kanina is from Fahrenheit to, to degree Celsius is 5 over 9, no? 5 over 9, tapos multiply the quantity of temperature na naka Fahrenheit minus 30. Okay. So, yan. So, ayan. So, ayan nga 5 over 9. 5 over 9. No? over the temperature 1 minus 32. Okay? So, kung ipapasok natin siya, 5 over 9. Ngayon is 32 minus 32. Eventually, magka-cancel siya, magiging 5 over 9. So, cancel out to. So, magiging 5 over 9. Tama? So, that's the T1. So, T2 naman, na nakadegree Celsius, is equal to 5 over 9 multiply by T2 or yung T8, uh, 98 pala, sorry. 6 minus 32 Okay. So let's use our calculator. No? Madali lang to sa calculator natin. So 5 over 9. Minus 30. So this is 30C. 30C bin. Ayan guys. Um, ito pala is naka degree Celsius na no. Forget our unit. No? It's 37 degrees Celsius. So, para makuha natin yung change in temperature, is kailangan natin i-subtract yung T2 minus T1. Okay? So, direct ako na 37 minus 5 over 9. 
Teka. Hindi to 5 over 9 guys, no? Bakit ko kinancel? Kasi magsisiro to, dapat siro na to. Tama. So, balikan ko yan, ha? Balikan ko. Balikan ko lang to guys, ha? So, 5 over 9 to 0. Kasi 0, multiply by 5 over 9 is 0. So, dapat, ito is 0 to. Sorry. Saka, mali din. Ayan. So, magiging 37 degrees Celsius yung change in temperature natin. This, this is our answer. 4 degrees Celsius. Okay. Punta naman tayo sa Kelvin. Okay. So, dito sa Kelvin naman, dahil nakuha na natin yung um, nakuha na natin yung degree Celsius niya na, na temperature is mag a na lang tayo ng 273 per 15. Okay? So, yung T1 natin na nakakelvin is equal to temperature 1 na nakadegree Celsius plus 200 73.15 So kung babalikan natin yung previous page yung T1 natin is 0 no? kung 0 yan 273.15 And this is naka Kelvin wala siyang decrease. So, yung tito naman natin, naka-Kelvin is equal to T2 na naka-degree Celsius plus 273.15. Okay? So, ilan yun? Previous page. Thirty-seven. Right? 37 plus 273.15 yung lalabas Thirty-seven plus 273.15 is 310.15 So, para makuha natin yung change of temperature is magiging T1 at T2 minus T1. So, dahil T2 minus T1 magiging 310.15 minus 273.15. So, ang answer dito ito nga lang siya gagamitin uh, 273.15 is magiging 37 okay so this is 37 37 you know, 37 Kelvin Ayan. so this is our final answer okay so ganun yun lang siya kadali no? yung mga gayetong uri na problem okay Balik tayo. Okay. So, yan. So, dito naman tayo sa Kelvin Scale in Absolute Temperature. Ako, mahaba-habang usapan to. So, the Celsius Scale was, uh, the Celsius Scale has two fixed points. The normal freezing and boiling temperature of what? So, meron siyang dalawang fixed point na pinagkunan, no? Inidiscuss ka natin kanina. Yung boiling point ng tubig, saka yung um, freezing point. Okay. But we can define the Kelvin scale by using a gas thermometer with only a single reference temperature. We define the ratio of any two temperature by T1 and T2 on Kelvin scale. As the ratio of corresponding gas thermometer pressure, 1 and 2. Okay? So, dahil nga doon sa 
uh, experiment kanina, nakapag-conclude nila. And nakagawa sila ng formula na T1 over, uh, T2 over T1. A ratio of T2 sa T1 is equal to P2 equal, uh, over P1. So ito yung tinatawag na constant volume gas thermometer. So, the pressure P is directly proportional to Kelvin temperatures as shown in the figure. So, dun sa figure na kanina. No? Yung graph natin, kanina. Ito. So, to complete the definition of P, we need only specify the Kelvin temperature for a single specific state for reason, for a precision, and reprodus, uh, ano ba to? reproducibility. Okay? The state chosen is the triple point of water. So this is unique combination of temperature and pressure at which Solid water, ice, liquid water, and water vapor can all coexist. Okay? Ito occurs sa temperature of 0.1 degree Celsius and the water vapor pressure of 610 Pascal or about a 0.006 atm. Okay? This is pressure of water in natin. Okay? So, the triple point temperature, temperature T triple of water is defined. So, punta tayo dito ngayon. So, meron daw, para makuha natin yung T, no? Papasok yung tinatawag na T triple. Okay. Multiply the P over P triple. Okay, so gawin natin mas ano? Gawin natin T, TR. Ibig sabihin, triple. Multiply by P over P triple. Okay. So may equate natin to sa 2.73. 0.16 Kelvin. Okay? Ito yung T triple natin. Multiply by P over P triple. Ayan. So, low pressure gas thermometer using a various gases are found to decrease every closely. But they are large, bulky, and very slow to come to thermal equilibrium. They are used principally to establish high precision standard and to calibrate other thermometers. Okay. Ito siya. So ito naman, um, pinapakita dito yung relationship among the three temperature scale we have discussed. Okay, the, tel the Kelvin scale, or yung tinatawag natin na absolute temperature scale na merong zero, papansin nyo, okay, so dito meron siyang zero, na absolute zero, no? Yung temperature natin dito ay zero and negative 273. Okay, negative 273. So, yung P is 0 naman. So, ito pala, ito yung tinatawag na absolute 0. Okay. So, punta naman tayo dito sa tinatawag na thermal expansion. So, most, la, uh, most material expand when their temperature increase. Uh, rising, temperature may, may, uh, rising temperature make the liquid expand and a liquid tube thermometer. 
So, yun, ito yung tinatawag na thermal expansion. Ito rin yung dahilan kung bakit nakakakita tayo na awang sa mga ginagawang sementadong kalsada. Kaya hindi siya ginagawang buo, hindi meron siyang awang na konti. Ito rin ang dahilan kung bakit iniinit ng ating nanay yung garapon kapag hindi niya nabubuksan. Yung takip ng garapon lang, ha? yung metal yung takip ng garapon, iniinit para mabuksan. So, ito yung tinatawag na thermal expansion. Okay? So, papasok ngayon tayo sa tinatawag na linear expansion. So, suppose a rod material has a length of LO, no? So, for example daw, meron tayong rod So, kunwari, meron tayong rod. Pagpasensyahan nyo na ang drawing ko. No? Pare, meron tayong rod no? na merong length na L0 o LO. Sa initial temperature or T0. So, kapag nagkaroon ng temperature changes or delta T, so, pag nagkaroon ng delta T, yung rod natin is magkakaroon ng change in length. So, magkakaroon din ng delta N. Okay? So, paano natin ito papalabasin? Ay, i-redraw ko lang guys para mas maintindihan natin. Okay? So, at initial temperature, no? TO, yung rod natin, is nagkaroon ng Ah, meron siyang initial length na LO. Una. Pero, nagkaroon ngayon ng tinatawag na temperature change. So, ngayon, nagkaroon ng delta T. So, ano mangyayari sa rad natin? So, yung rad natin, is magkakaroon ngayon ng paghahaba. Okay? Yan. So, yung paghaba na yun, itong paghaba na to is yung tinatawag natin, change of length. Yan. So, kapag nadoble, kunwari, nadoble yung temperature changes, no? naging 2 yung delta T natin, So, ano mangyayari sa rad natin? Ang mangyayari, mangyayari sa rad is madudoble din yung haba. Okay? So, ang mangyayari dito, ito ngayon, is magiging 2 change in L. Okay? So, parang ganyan po siya. So, dito sa formula ng to, sa, dito sa figure na to, makakakuha tayo ng proportionality. Okay? So, ang um, ma-formulate natin dito is yung delta L is equal to alpha initial length multiplied by the change in temperature. Okay? Ito ngayon ang tinatawag na linear thermal expansion. Okay? If a body has a length of LO at temperature zero, uh, initial temperature in the zero, then its length at temperature is T is equal magiging T is equal to T initial plus yon. 
So, mangyayari, magiging L is equal to initial length plus the change on length. Okay? So, ipapasok natin ngayon yung formula kanina. Ito, pasok natin dito. So, magiging initial length plus the alpha LO change in temperature. Okay. So, pag sinimplify natin siya, magiging initial length multiply the quantity O. So, inilabas na lang natin, no? Magilabas natin yung LO. Plus alpha Bakit yung alpha kung ganyan na yung tura? Ba't ganyan yan? Alpha, change on temperature. Okay. So, nagtataka ngayon, ano yung alpha na yun? So, yung alpha na yan ay yung tinatawag nating coefficient of linear expansion. Okay? So, yung iba't ibang material is merong coefficient of linear expansion. So, tingnan natin kung meron tayong binigay na ground. So, ito siya. Ito yung coefficient of linear expansion. Okay. So, ngayon, pasok tayo sa tinatawag naman na volume expansion. Okay. So, kunwari, kunwari, no? So, kunwari, meron ako dito cube. So, kunwari, meron akong cube dito. Pasensya nyo ng drawing ko, ha? So, kunwari, meron akong cube dito. Ayan yung cube na yun, na initan. So, dahil merong linear expansion na naganap sa kanya, ang mangyayari ngayon, yung cube na yun, is lalaki din. So, pag merong lumaki sa mga sides niya, lalaki din yung volume niya. Tama. Yung paglaki ng volume na yun, is yung tinatawag na um, volume thermal expansion. So, yung volume thermal expansion na yun, is merong formula na change, yung, change in volume, is equal to beta initial volume multiply by the change in temperature. Bakit ako nagbublo? Puti lang dapat. Yeah. So, ulitin ko. Change in volume is equal to beta initial volume multiply by the change in temperature. Okay. And yung beta natin is yung tinatawag na coefficient of volume expansion na kung nakita nyo kanina, nandito siya. Okay. So, iba't ibang material, magkakaiba yung beta. Okay. So, for a solid material, Okay, for a solid material, there is a simple relationship between the volume expansion, coefficient beta, and the linear expansion coefficient alpha. So, to derive this relationship, we consider a cube of material with side L and volume B. So, yung volume, kung natatandaan nyo, kung meron tayong cube material, ang formula ng volume is length cube. No. Ito ay nasa initial temperature, the values are initial L and initial V. No. So when the temperature increases by derivative of time, the side length increases with the derivative of length and the volume increases with the volume, uh, amount of derivative of V. So ma formula natin, no? Kapag dinerebative natin to, ang mangyayari is magiging 
derivative of b is equal to the derivative of b over derivative derivative of l derivative like derivative of l or mangyayari derivative natin siya magiging derivative of b using power formula magiging 3 l raised to 2 dl so ginamit natin yung calculus dito so sa sana alam niyo yung kung paano yung calculus. So, ito yung ginamit natin ng power formula. So, hindi ko na i-discuss yung power formula kasi i-discuss yan sa calculus nyo. Alam ko, co-requisite or prerequisite nitong P6 to yung calculus. Okay? So, ayan. Okay? So, ngayon, i-replace natin yung L and B by initial value of B0 uh, L O and BO, doon sa formula ng DL. Okay? So, yung formula kasi ng DL, our derivative of length is equal to the alpha LO derivative of time. Or temperature pala, sorry. Temperature. Nag-aano na naman yung dog na sa kabila. Okay. So, since volume initial is equal to length initial cube, pwede natin i-express yung derivative of volume natin is equal to 3, ito siya, no? 3 initial length square Alpha, no, kasi yung DL, ito, magiging alpha, initial length, derivative of temperature. So, pag sinimplify natin siya, magiging 3, alpha, initial volume, derivative of temperature. Okay? So, DB. So, this is consistent with the in, uh, infinitesimal, infinitesimal. So, from the equation of derivative of volume is equal to beta. No? So, the Hildon magiging beta is equal to 3 alpha. So, this is the relationship ng dalawa. Ito yung relasyon nila. Okay. It's back to the presentation. Okay. So, meron tayong example number 2 ngayon. Dito, no? So, example number 2 is a lead due to te uh, temperature changes. Okay. A surveyor uses a steel measuring tape where, uh, that is exactly 50 meters long at temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. The marking on tape are calibrated for this temperature. So question number, uh, letter A, what is the length of the tape when the temperature is 35 degrees Celsius? So yung question letter B is when it is 35 degrees Celsius, the surveyor use the tape to measure a distance. The value that she reads of the tape is 35.794 uh, meter. So what is the actual distance? Okay? So punta tayo sa word natin. No? So, anong gagawin natin dito? So, yung surveyor daw, merong steel measuring tape na merong L, LEN, or LO. No? Na 550.000 meters. No? Tapos, ito ay nangyari sa tem initial temperature na 20 degrees Celsius. Okay? 
So, ikinalibrate yung tip na yun doon sa ano na yun. Um, Inalibrate yung tape na yun para doon sa temperature na yun. Okay. So, what is the length of the tape when the temperature is 35 degrees C? So, meron tayong change in change in um, temperature. Okay. So, 35, no? Yung T natin is mag 35. So, meron tayong tinatawag na change yung temperature, no? Delta T. Yung delta T natin is T minus initial. So, pag pinasok natin yan is 35. Celsius 35 minus 20 equals to calculator 15 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, galing doon sa equation natin na ginamit kanina, no? so, mangyayari is change in length is equal to alpha. LO change of temperature. Okay, yung formula natin kanina. So, ang una natin titingnan muna, is ano ba yung alpha? Okay? So, dahil ang ginamit niya dito is, di ba, ang ginamit niya is steel. Ano ba yung alpha ng steel? Okay, balik tayo sa presentation. Muna. So, yung steel daw is 1.2 times 10 raised to negative 5. Yung alpha. Ito yung gagamitin natin. Okay? Okay? Okay. Ayan. So, lagay na natin, no? Lagay na natin siya. Maganda siguro, iliwat ko to ng board. So, alpha L is equal to ah, hindi alpha. Bayan. Change in length pala. Alpha initial length multiply by the change of temperature. So, yung tem change of temperature natin, nakuha na natin. So, yung alpha kanina, ah, kung natatanda yung space, 1.2 times 10 raised to negative 5. Okay? So, ang value ng alpha, ang unit pala ng alpha is uh, 1 over kel. Okay? Or k raised to negative 1. Okay? So, meron tayong initial length. So, yung initial length natin kanina, ano yun? Ang initial length natin is 50 meters. No? So, yung change of temperature natin is 50. Tama? Tama? Yes, tama. So, ngayon, using our calculator, we can compute the change of length. Okay. Uh, 1.2 times 10 raised to raised to negative 5. Okay? Multiply by 50. Multiply by 15. So, ang lalabas is 9 times 10 raised to negative 3. Or sa decimal is 0 0.009 meters. Okay? Pero, hindi pa ito yung final answer kasi ang length natin, no? Ang um, yung length talaga natin is yung summation 
ng change in length plus the initial length. Okay. So, i-add lang natin siya. 0.0009 plus 50 is equal to Huwag na natin mag-calculator, no? Papahirapan pa natin, sarili natin. 50.0009 meters. So, ito yung sagot doon sa letter A. Okay. Punta tayo ngayon sa letter B. Okay. So, yung letter B kasi, ang sinasabi niya kasi dito sa letter B is when it is there in... When it is 35 degrees Celsius, the surveyor used the tape to measure a distance. The value that she reads of the tape is 35.794 meters. 794 meters. What is the actual distance? So dahil, so dahil uminit, nagkaroon ng thermal expansion, is hindi na accurate yung calibration ng tape niya. So, paano natin siya i-compute? Okay. So, galing doon sa result ng ating part A or yung question A na 30, uh, 30 at 35 degrees Celsius, nag-slightly expand yung tape no? ng 0.009 meters. So, we can rewrite the algebra of part A so that makuha natin siya. Okay? So, ang gagamitin nating formula yung kanina, L. Initial length. No? Magiging 1 plus alpha change in temperature. Okay? So, dapat dito is at 35 degrees Celsius. Okay. So, ang mangyayari, no? So, any true distance will be greater than the reading by the factor 50.009 divided by P. Okay. So, may factor daw, no? Magiging 50.0009. Tama? Ah, uh, mali. 9 over 50 is equal to 1 plus alpha change of temperature. Okay. Or magiging is equal to 1 plus 1.8 times 10 raised to 4. So, yung three true distance natin, no, is magiging 1 plus 1.8 times 10 raised to 4 multiply Diba may binigay siyang, ano, no, may binigay siyang length? Yung nakuha niyang length? So, ang lalabas dito Compute natin 35.794 Parang wait lang 
Negatif pala to. Okay. Ang lumabas is 35. Ito yung actual. 35.8 meters. So, this is the actual length. Ito yung answer natin sa letter B. Okay. So, ganun lang siya. Okay, balik tayo sa presentation. So, example number 3. No? Siguro, uh, tapusin ko lang itong um, example number 3. Then, ikakat ko muna yung video. Okay? Kasi so, 1 hour na siya. Okay. So, let's go to the example number 3. Uh, 200 square centimeter glass plus is filled to brim with mercury at 20 degrees. How much mercury overflow when the temperature of the system is raised to 100 degrees C, the coefficient of Lernia expansion of glass is 0.4 times 10 raised to negative 5 K raised to 1. Okay. Let's solve this problem. So, ito yung problem na nag-involve ng tinatawag na expansi uh, volume expansion ng glass and mercury. Okay. The amount of overflow depends on the difference between the volume changes of um, delta B no, for these two materials. So, binigay naman yung equation na ito kanina. Okay. So, the mercury will overflow if its coefficient of volume expansion, beta, is greater than the glass. Which we find in the, yung nasa previous equation natin. So, So, ang magandang gawin muna dito, hanapin muna natin yung beta nung mercury. Okay? So, gamit yung table kanina, hanapin natin yung beta ng mercury. Okay? Yung beta ng mercury is 18. Yung gamitin natin liquid no 18 times 10 raised to negative 5 okay so, this is 18 times 10 raised to negative 5 ang unit niya is k1 that is indeed greater than the ano, ang um, beta ng glass. So, galing doon sa equation, kanina, no? Okay, yung equation na nakuha natin kanina, no? So, ano yung equation na yun? Yung beta, di ba yung beta, equals to 3 alpha. So, pwede nating sabihin na yung beta ng glass is equal to 3 alpha of glass. Okay. Or, magiging 3 doon sa table, 0.4 yung glass na ay hindi binigay sa given. It's 10 raised to negative 5. No? Ganyan. So, ang lalabas dito is 1.2. 
times 10 raised to 5. Okay. So, ito yung gagamitin natin beta ng glass. So, the volume overflow is then, no, magiging change of volume na mercury minus the change of volume ng glass So, yung magiging is equal to beta Huwag natin indicate ng mercury Tama? Tapos, initial volume multiply by the change of temperature minus di magkakasya yung formula ko sub natin so, magiging beta ng glass as initial volume at change of temperature so ganyan so magiging is equal to ngayon sa volume, initial volume, nilabas natin, no? Nilabas natin yung initial volume, tapos, change of temperature. Mang mangyayari, beta ng, high, uh, ng mercury minus the beta, be, mali tuloy yung beta ko. Beta na <laughs> Beta ng glass. Yan. So, pasok lang natin, no? Meron tayong ibinigay na initial volume, no? May ibinigay siyang initial volume. Yung initial volume natin is 200 cm. No? Cube. Uh, para magkasya yung formula ko, ilipat ko siya dito. Ah. Magiging equal. Magiging 200, no? Cubic centimeter. Tapos yung change of temperature natin is 80. Binigay sa given. Ngayon, ima-minus natin yung dalawang beta, no? Isang 18 times 10 raised to negative 5 minus yung nakuha natin, na-compute natin kanina, times 10 raised to negative 5. Yan. So, yung na-compute natin kanina. So, using our calculator, lalabas ngayon yung natapon na volume. So, 200 Multiply by 80, tapos uh, 18 times 10 to the negative 5 minus 1.2 times 10 raised to negative 5. Ang lalabas is 2.688. Okay? So approximately 2.7 centimeters. So, this is answer. Yan yung natapon na mercury doon sa glass. Okay. And dito muna ako, ano, dito muna ako matatapos sa aking lesson. So, hanggang dito muna. Tapos, ipapatuloy ko mo yung video kasi lampas ng one hour. Okay. So, para pwede yung hati-hatiin. Okay. So, ang um, hinihingi ko lang ngayon is ilista nyo lang lahat ng ah, hindi nyo naintindihan or kailangan ng clarification. Ilista nyo lahat ng question nyo para pag nag-synchronous meeting tayo, um, i-re-raise natin yun. Okay? Pag, pag na-raise nyo yun, and sasagutin natin. Okay? So, dito na muna, um, Hintayin nyo na lang yung susunod na upload ng video na ito. Okay? Thank you so much sa pakikinig.